In case you're wondering, I'm filming directly after the previous recap video, which explains why Nick is here. Today I'm going to continue working on my Patreon shrine, and I'm not going to show you how it looks like yet right now, because some of my new stuff are in there. But I have to remove everything anyway, because I will be reworking the placement of the stumps. So I'm going to take your suggestions. I'm going to remove the fourth stump because it looked different compared to the others. I'm going to have three stumps in the middle and at the far ends on both sides would be pedestals made out of rocks. And I definitely agree that that is an aesthetically pleasing arrangement. Unfortunately, a lot of lifting is involved here so I would have to put Nikki down before I start. I'll be back. We had some relatives visiting us over the weekend and we went on a long drive southwest towards the Great Ocean Road. It's been a while since I used my camera for any landscape photography, so my uncle and I went crazy with our cameras. Here's some of the shots that I took. Seeing the rock formations reminded me of my garden because my garden has an earthy look with the materials that I use gave me a few ideas. We decided to drop by one of the nearby garden centers. This is Diakos at Keeler Park Drive. And I went to have a look at their selection of pots and bowls. And as you can recall, I, I am in the market looking for large bowls, something that's at least 45 centimeters in diameter. With that in mind, these two caught my eye. One is an unsealed terracotta bowl, and it's about 55 centimeters. And the other is a gray terracotta with different markings, different style, and it looked a lot better visually, at least in my taste. This one is also 55 centimeters, but it is a lot more expensive compared to the regular one. But I decided to go with it anyway, because you only live once. I'm not sure if you can see them, but I've got five. I was thinking of going with just three at first, but they only had five, so I thought that maybe I should get them all. Or at least they only had five in the shelves. I had to put down the seats and do a bit of shifting just to get them all to fit, but we've got five. It's almost midnight. Just finished raining. It's quite cold outside and the jacket. The kids are asleep and this is pretty much the only time to do some gardening. As you can see, there's a few plants here. This one I just finished potting up a while ago and I'm going to work on this one. This is actually one of the plants that I beheaded recently. This is the Echeveria embossed gem. And if you look closely, roots have started forming. And this tells me that it's a good time. Now it's a good time to transfer it into a proper pot. Because all this time I just had it in an empty pot, you know, exposed to the air. Because I needed it to stay dry, you know, just to reduce the risk of rot. And we're finally done with the weight. So it's time to put this in the pot.
7.20 in the morning and I've been awake since 5 a.m. anticipating the sunrise. I don't normally wake up at this hour but I wanted to see what the state of my plants are in because we had a forecast for frost and at the moment it's about 2 to 3 degrees Celsius it's just a few degrees above freezing as you can see <laughs> my breath is forming some vapor is this water vapor? steam? yeah something similar to steam causing some fog uh, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> now let's have a look at the plants it looks like the temps have dropped even further down to 1.8 degrees but the temperature should start rising anytime now because according to the forecast we're getting a top of 15 degrees today which is not bad actually but we had uh, we had a really cold night last night. With that said, let's have a closer look at the plants this time. As you can see, nothing really alarming there. There's just a light frost cover on my plants, but there's no damage yet. I guess it hasn't been that cold for that long. Actually, this one has a better view. I might switch to my macro. It appears that there's no damage and it, by the looks of things, it looks like the frost have already started melting. So unfortunately for you and fortunately for me, it was over too soon. But you must realize today is the 1st of June. This is the first official day of winter in the Southern Hemisphere. So this is just going to be the first of many frost warnings. Taste of things to come. This is where we left off the last time. As you can see, the pedestals are here. The plants are on top of them. This fourth stump is different from the rest and the fifth one is on a, on a pedestal made of rocks. Before I can begin working on this, I would need to remove everything, including the stumps. So some heavy lifting to start my morning. Let's go.
you can see I've got lots of excess soil here on both sides and I need to shift them elsewhere remove them from this spot so I need to work on this area and there's too much they are too mounded right now what I'm going to do is I'll be putting this extra soil somewhere at the other areas for now just away from here that way to give me a clearer view for when I work on backfilling this area I'm going to line the stumps with more of this Tuscan rocks so as my buddy Stevie from Not An Under Cooking Show would say always be cleaning it's time to clean on the matter of shovels though uh, when dealing with soil or dirt or something loose like this there are better shovels than this what I have right here is a D-shaped shovel this is best suited for digging but there are okay. there's specific water? water yes okay let's go be right back yeah. okay as i was saying there are specialized shovels meant for digging this is this is it and there are also shovels that are better used for shifting stuff you know lifting carrying stuff and for that you would want to use a, a flat I'm not sure what they call it but it's a it's a flat head shovel for meant for gravel oh this is obviously not it and as you can see there's a bit of curve this curve allows you to, to use some leverage which is why it's perfect for digging because you can do this but for shifting shovel from from the ground it's best if it's flat because you can just slide it like this and shift it easily so I wish I had one but I don't so I just have to make do with what I have Now back to the state where we left off in the two episodes ago when we finished working on the shrine and I managed to shift everything to the right that way there's enough space on both sides and as requested I'm left with this three stumps the largest one is in the middle then flanked by two other stumps and on the far sides are pedestals made of rock now in the middle this is D'Artagnan the Zorro I place it in the middle because it's the tallest the biggest of them all and it is flanked by two freelies. This is Charla D and this is Maridel. The far left is Rick Astley and the far right is still empty. So please claim it someone. <laughs> and since we're here, I might as well take this opportunity to thank my Patreons. That's Oscarino, Julie Seal, Snap Kui, Gloria Ninotti, Camille Narvaez, Linda, Tom, and everyone else. Thank you so much for your support. I couldn't do this without you. And now it's time to move on. Next phase. Towards the end of the previous episode, I was trying to figure out what I would like to do with all of this space around the, the pedestals and I thought that maybe I could submerge, partially submerge a bunch of pots, a bunch of bowls. Sometime last week, I spent a bit of time looking for suitable bowls and I found ones that I really like. Apart from the bowls, I wasn't really sure 
about the look that I wanted here. All I know is I wanted something cascading and we have pillars care of the edge of areas in all of these pots as well as the pedestals. Having a look at those rock pillars had me gave me a bit of inspiration. You know how the Tuscan rocks, especially after I wash them, because these ones are dirty right now. They have these striations, these lines, these pots, the pillars made by the pots remind me of the 12 apostles. So I thought, hi sir. So I thought, why not get pots or bowls that have lines as well, you know? Just to complement, just to complete the look. So I got this. Let's go look at the pots. You have Now, these are a bunch of 55 centimeter bowls. Yes. 55 is about 21 or 22 oh. inches. Huh? Sit here. Sit. Are you going to fit inside? Wow! <laughs> So yeah, I'm going to partially submerge this in the soil. I was originally thinking of placing this on top of the pedestals, but they're too big. Too big to, to fit. They are all 55s. So if I place them on the pedestals, they would require a lot of space. And I don't think they, look, they would look nice that way. So on the ground, they would go. Here they are. You have these lines here. And it reminds me a lot of the 12 apostles, those rock formations. Good. Good. However, I'm going to submerge them a bit, dig a hole for them. I'm going to expose maybe only above this line. So only this one. These parts would be visible above ground. Lots of digging to do.
this is perfect because I now have enough soil to backfill the area if I do intend to work on project locks. I did mention it in one of my previous videos. So, yes, thank you so much, Soilworks. Still got lots of soil. <laughs> All worth it. I'm going to end this episode doing a bit of cleanup because I made quite a mess. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Early morning.